Right, sorry, I had to clarify some technicalities. Uh, I'm very happy to be here, and uh, not to confuse you, but I seem to be uh, expressing myself through three uh, different titles today. So it was first in the program, I think it's how to uh, assess open, um, uh, the openness of academic publishers. And in our slides, it says openness of uh, academic publishers. And then, um, the third one, which is, um, um, let's see, is it not, yeah, not that, but yeah, so um, our uh, project title, which is, uh, which we wrote now to our sort of interim report was uh, opening academic publishing, uh, development and application of systematic evaluation criteria. And as you can see, the, the basic info here is that uh, this project is um, commissioned by the Open Science and Research Initiative of the Finnish Ministry of Education and Culture. And uh, we have this uh, modest aim of, uh, of to, to propose a scorecard for, uh, for evaluating openness in academic publishing. And the timeline is there. We started in early October and we're going to hand in our final report in, in early December. And uh, so who's doing it? <laughs> like, uh, like it was already addressed, we have uh, people from Urban Knowledge Finland and then Oxford Research and then some others as well. Uh, firstly, we have researcher and uh, docent Leo Lahti, who was already mentioned earlier today a long-term activist on this field uh, who couldn't be here today, but uh, hopefully we'll be uh, hearing this uh, um, later on or something. Uh, then we also have Mikhail Laksa, who's present here today, um, an associate professor from Hanken School of Economics, who's also uh, published um, uh, on this field and is an expert in this uh, topic. And then uh, we have Open Knowledge Finland's uh, Teemu Ropponen in the team as well. Um, and then uh, myself and my colleague uh, from Oxford Research, Juha Matti Paavola, and, and uh, we are doing some of the data collecting and uh, um, the writing uh, tasks. And uh, yeah, so um, we have two main questions here, which are, I suppose, uh, sort of simple and big enough at the same time. Um, and the first is that the, which key factors should be included in the evaluation. And uh, then the second one is how should and could these key factors be defined and benchmarked. So firstly we propose that uh, there should be a consistent uh, scorecard that could be used to benchmark the openness of uh, any academic journal publisher. And then we propose to construct, uh, construct such a, a scorecard and then uh, apply it uh, to some extent. And uh, this is because uh, despite the availability of standardized criteria in terms of, um, of uh, open science support, such as self archiving uh, practices or CC licenses, um, there's still a, consider a considerable uh, variance in these practices and the support for them. So it would be uh, handy to have something which you could use to, to evaluate this different. It could be a, a tool for, uh, I think first and foremost, for also uh, individual researchers to try to evaluate their uh, options when they're tr deci uh, deciding where to publish. And as you can see the logos there, um, our list uh, of, uh, of uh, international academic publishers, uh, which was commissioned to be reviewed here um, in this, this pilot, um, includes a set of large academic publishers uh, with the variations in their size of uh, journal portfolios, uh, diversity of, of research dis uh, disciplines, business logics, and uh, existing if, uh, efforts to support open science. So you can see there is ACM, then there's ACS, Elsevier, IEEE, Lippincott, Williams and Wilkins, Sage, Springer Nature, uh, Taylor and Francis Group, and Wiley and Blackwell. And uh, so this is, at, at present, this is sort of like an act of mapping. We're, first we're mapping the field, and then we're, uh, we're uh, testing the possibility of defining such criteria and then we're 
proceeding with uh, with uh, testing the criteria or, or um, applying those. And we realize obviously that this is a uh, quite a complex task that we're up to, and uh, in order to uh, to to come up with the best possible solution and and move forward with this, uh, we are trying to uh, first and foremost sort of promote this dialogue and discussion on this topic. And uh, in the spirit of this dialogue, we also uh, approached uh, these publishers that were selected for this for this. Um, uh, report and then their feedback will be assessed then in our uh, final report as well. So we also uh, asked social media, what should we do? And uh, we got some uh, feedback on, on what should be included in the list of key factors if such a scoreboard should be uh, drafted. And you can see the list there is uh, maybe uh, slightly usual suspects of this uh, publishing only open access versus fraction of open access journals, licenses of the, licensing of the publications, pre and post print policies, uh, then there's price tax on openness, but then um, also this um, openness of the review process that we were just uh, hearing about, and then it's openness related to processes and businesses. And actually this, it was suggested that this licensing should be the main, main factor because uh, because then uh, if, if content is openly licensed, then everything else flows from that. Um, uh, there was also uh, um, uh, some indication that it should be looked at how well actively and well publishers promote uh, change towards these open practices. But then also some uh, discussion points, which were uh, uh, something that it could be assessed uh, as well. Um, also, it was proposed that the percentage of citations to openly licensed content could be used to give weight to impact this openness. This is, of course, slightly uh, problematic because then uh, we, we cite things that we find relevant and not maybe because they are open. So this one thing, but that was also mentioned. Also, it was brought up that it wasn't necessarily publishing, which is the key, as was just uh, referred to, that if maybe data is becoming bigger, and then, then open science in, in, in larger scale, a larger uh, scale would become more significant and then sort of take over the platform of, of the significance of publishing. Also, uh, it was raised uh, the, whether it was a question of openness as in open science versus openness as in transparent organizations. And then this is one point that uh, can also be discussed in relation to this, that's, that to what extent is it one or the other. And then whether uh, it should be dif um, differentiated between non-profit and profit organization, for-profit organizations. So this is what we, uh, what we got when we were asking, and, and the next one is what we decided to do. So we have uh, eight in total of key factors which we are using to, to, uh, to evaluate this openness. And, and uh, you can see the first five here. It's the percentage of open access journals of the total publication output, uh, costs of open uh, access publishing. Uh, yeah, currently we are hoping for a full open access journal and hybrid uh, open access pricing, but I'll come back to that. Uh, use of Creative Commons licensing, uh, restrictiveness and transparency of self-archiving policies, and then data mining rights and available tools. Uh, also, by the way, about the first point, um, we are hoping to look at also the, the number of open access articles. But we'll see. Uh, also, then there's available, uh, availability of open citation data accessibility of information relating to open access practices and activities to promote open science, for instance, guidelines and methods and data availability and other activities as well. Um, so this is, um, like I said, where we're, uh, we're talking about a huge field with uh, a variety of actors who come from different backgrounds and have different logics. So. Uh, so far, we have um, focused on the first five, uh, but we have da drafted these kind of limiting values for all of them, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, but maybe uh, first an obvious uh, disclaimer that, uh, that these sort of uh, 
these factors extend beyond their these descriptive uh, titles. So, so there are obviously a lot of premises that we uh, we need to take into account, uh, or we need to maybe define or decide upon when we uh, can use these. But nevertheless, this is uh, this is so far our our uh, favorite list. Um, the logic behind this has uh, th this choice has been to look at the set of, of, of lowest common denominators. I would say uh, how to so that we would actually come up with something that we could use to apply it to uh, to as um, to as large extent, extent as possible. So I'll just say a couple of things about the sources before uh, moving to to the the. The limiting values. Um, we were using mainly publishers' websites because one of the, the ac points we want to assess is the accessibility of information of one of the key uh, of the key features. And um, we uh, we had exceptions. Yes, uh, we were also uh, so far we've been using Scopus. Then. Uh, uh, this uh, DOAJ and Sherpa Romeo for very limited use, and uh, Sherpa Romeo wasn't used uh, as a primary source, but also, uh, but only as a, as a sort of additional reference. Um, this is because maybe the most um, uh, these are very big, uh, big um, actors in the field, and if you want to assess their full their lists of their journals or open access journals or something, uh, it's not so easily found if, if you have uh, several uh, imprints there. But uh, yeah, you could find them somewhere, but uh, not in all of the cases. But uh, this is something that we will then write in our report uh, as transparently as possible, than what we've done. Um, and also, like I was already referring to earlier, the publishers were giving the opportunity to comment on our findings. Um, a very uh, so far, only few responses, I'm afraid. I was hoping to have more feedback by by this forum, but not so many have replied. Uh, Spring and Nature replied also, Elsevier, and uh, they uh, they were quite uh, useful. There was some um, some uh, affirmations, some uh, some correctives, some some additional information, and, and we can we can also use this in no a problem. But then we'll write it out in the. In the uh, in the report, right. So, to the actual point. Oh, here we go. I hope you can see some of it. It's quite small because we uh, tried to fit it in one slide. And uh, here you can see, like the we have the factors listed. So you have uh, the number of OA journals, and uh, and then uh, um, this is the scale that we were trying to uh, the limiting values that we were coming up with when, when, when we were trying to figure out how to assess it, this. So first, you have the number of open access journals, and this would be the percentage of open access journals out of the total uh, publication output, because otherwise it would be, I mean, it has to be uh, applied to different size um, uh, publishers. And uh, so you have 100% uh, open access on, on green, and then going down from there to zero uh, percentage. Then there's costs, which I'll come back to uh, in the next slide. Uh, this is a scale of, um, yeah, this is, everything here is based on, on what's accessible and what can be found on the websites, but also to this wider background of, of the open access publishing world at the moment. So this is a proposition to use this uh, scale for costs. But like I said, I'll come back to that. Then licensing, um, we have uh, there emphasized the ZZ buy. That would be the, the aim, so to say. And then other uh, hybrid forms going down from there. And then maybe the publisher's own licenses only uh, there, because where this would be a, a proposition to, to, to prioritize the standardized uh, way. Self-archiving is uh, pretty straightforward, I think. That is, uh, uh, we, the aim, aim would be to have no embargoes and, and, and pre- and post-print uh, allowed. Uh, data mining, um, 
There we would uh, differentiate between uh, whether this is uh, how much data is available, whether you can download it or, or if it's uh, available for automated uh, uh, data mining with any software, as opposed to something which can only be used on a publisher server, for example. Uh, for example. Uh, then there's open citation, which is lacking numbers one and two at the moment. Um, but uh, yeah, this was inspired by this uh, this uh, recent um, uh, initiative for open citations, uh, which is a collaboration between uh, scholarly publishers and researchers and and interested parties. And, and yeah, so you could uh, you can see that uh, there are. Uh, uh, there are ac actions uh, taken to promote this, but whether people are, attend, um, are participating or not is still a question. Um, then there's this accessibility to information. Um, that, that you wouldn't have any data, that's, I mean, most, most publishers, I would say, that you have some data. But then if it's uh, really partial or, uh, or is uh, scattered everywhere, so you just have to dig for it uh, around the website, um, very unclearly presented or something, then that's not really serving the purpose of, of, um, of uh, providing information for somebody who's trying to decide whether I'm publishing there, here or there and what, I, what I'm uh, um, emphasizing at the moment. So we would prefer the option that would be data in one location and easily available. Um, and also these uh, activities to promote uh, open science um, this refers to the negotiations that we were uh, hearing about earlier in the Finnish uh, part of this, uh, this event. And uh, there you would, um, you would have like this uh, three point, uh, would be like full offsetting, all affiliated authors can publish open access in all published journals and at no uh, extra um, per article cost. So this is roughly what we, uh, we are now proposing. And uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, so just to give you a glance, uh, this is, like you can see, very indicative results, dialoguing progress, because we haven't got the feedback and we haven't done the, the final uh, assessment yet. But uh, this is some of the coloring. And I have to say that actually, I think one of the things that will change is the coloring, but we are aiming at the, the sort of like a traffic lights uh, uh, impact here. Um, but we'll see then uh, where we end up with. And uh, uh, firstly, I need to say that this cost is still in grey, which is not the colour we are going to include, but it's in grey because it's, it's, it's still too much work in progress. Because there's one, uh, there are a lot of questions of, of how to emphasise this. For example, you can have uh, very low cost, uh, but also very low impact um, journals, which, uh, which then, uh, as opposed to some very more ex expensive high impact journals, and then you need to know what to prefer. Um, and then also um, uh, licensing, we've, uh, we've uh, gone for CC so far, but now uh, we're also thinking how to take into account these, uh, these uh, publishers' licenses. Right, so um, I'm running out of time, so I, and I'll be happy to take questions, so I, I won't go into our future steps, <laughs> and I'll, I'm uh, hoping to have the feedback then. And also I have to say that I'll be in the speaker's corner also, uh, uh, taking questions later about this topic at four o'clock, so it's uh, you are welcome to ha post your questions there as well if there's no time now. Thank you so much. Thank you. So questions, comments, praises. <laughs> praises, I will take. <laughs> Yeah, Jussi Pippinen from Helsinki University Library. Uh, the future steps, I, I would be, maybe, I hope I didn't miss anything, but <laughs> what would be interesting to see that uh, change over time? Right. And, and uh, I hope you continue your research so that we see the change over time. <laughs> Thank you. That would be wonderful. And, and we're first when we have all this in place, then I hope there's a continuance somewhere. Yeah, right, that's very important to see where this is going. Thanks. We do have time for one more question. 
practice. So, hi, Pekka Arpunen, Aalto University. So, this may be a bit of a detail, but in, in your list of criteria for the... Um, oh, sorry, I went the wrong way. ...for the selection of journals, so... Well, it, it's there, but then when you sort of present the summary of the publisher, so you say something about impact, so you said kind of a, have mm. kind of a relatively small, small number of, of low impact. Mm, like yeah, it was related to the cost point, which is, which we haven't, which is in grey, because we haven't decided what to do with it. Yes, please. Yeah, okay. okay, yeah, I was, because the, kind of some of these are society publishers, yes. and this course, uh, the impact depends also on the field mm. that you are in, mm. so. I yes. know where you look for the impact numbers, but mm. being a computer scientist, I'm quite sensitive mm, to impact mm. numbers. Yes, actually, yes, and that's one of the points that I, I sort of hopped over, but, <laughs> but uh, uh, this is one of the questions that we've been thinking about when we're assessing the number of journals and, and the costs as well, that how do we take into account this, this impact thing, and if we take into account what quality of, uh, measure of quality we're using then, that's one of the big issues. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Kristina Hormia from National Library. So uh, I have a question related to this slide. I am surprised to see that there are several publishers who don't allow data mining. Mm -hmm. And now data mining is quite a hot topic in Europe because of mm -hmm. the copyright reform. Yes. So do you have an answer? Yes, this? I have an answer. It's a work in progress answer. But so far it's been, that's mostly, I think, also lack of response, but also uh, lack of our, uh, we need to assess more, uh, more sophisticated scales for this data mining things. But I have to say that it's, it's surprising that it's not so, it's not obviously there. And uh, some of them are, and, and you can see it there, <laughs> but um, some of them are not so obviously there. So it's, it's something that we are, but this coloring might change. But I have to say that this data mining thing was one of the, well, where uh, variations occur quite a lot. So it's, we need to think about that as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.